So, this is kind of a loaded question. Those of you guys out there that have kitted E36s, you know exactly what I'm talking about here. On one hand, you know, you have this vision for your car. You have this ideal uh, that you had in mind when you started building your car out. And uh, once you start going down that rabbit hole, way back kind of seems a little a little clouded and you kind of get um, go down this rabbit hole and you can't stop and once your car gets to a certain point you have to see it through well um, that's the kind of thing that happens with a lot of uh, builds I uh, you know what is the build for is it gonna be a show car is it gonna be a street car is it gonna be a drift car so um, you find yourself having to ask these, ask yourself these questions um, quite often so um, the question that you guys are probably wondering if you clicked on today's video is do I regret uh, wide body or rocket buddy in my E36 M3? Heck no! <laughs> no! that I definitely don't regret uh, why I body my car but to be quite honest I wish there were um, some things that I knew beforehand going in I wish I had someone to sit me down and explain uh, what doing this to your car actually does to its reliability its usability um, what the purpose of the car becomes once you start making these changes because let's be honest uh, a lot of the changes if you've seen my videos you've seen that some of the changes are permanent you know cutting into the body you know uh, making changes to the frame and bodywork are some irreparable um, changes that you really can't go back from you know uh, short of cutting corner panels out and replacing them completely which is definitely outside my wheelhouse of capabilities knowing certain things prior to going into a build uh, like this would be paramount so I felt it necessary to uh, talk to you guys one-on-one -on -one as if we're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation because I get asked this question the most through the comments um, on Instagram and on Facebook uh, is it worth it um, you know what are the things to look out for uh, and what can I expect can I daily drive it these are all questions that I kind of want to address today so and that being said uh, my name is AJ and I currently own and drive an E36 M3 Rocket Bunny and if you are new to the channel I want to thank you guys personally for showing up 
Uh, we do like to have fun here, and if you want to have fun with me, make sure you go down to the comment section down below. Leave me a comment, and while you're down there, hit that subscribe button, hit that alert button so you can be alerted every time I upload a video. If you want to catch the Pandem build from start to finish, it is here on the channel. I will leave a link up here. You can click on that, and you can get caught up from uh, start to finish to where we are right now. Now on to the point and topic of today's video. I do get asked this question quite frequently. Matter of fact, all the time. Uh, was it worth it? Do I regret it? And you know, in all honesty, that is not an easy question. It's not an easy question to answer for many reasons. I think quite honestly, there is a huge misconception at what a wide body kit is versus what an overfender kit is. So one of the biggest things that I wish somebody would have explained to me going into, you know, uh, wide body or rocket bunny in my car is that this is a legitimate wide body. You know, with the typical felony form kits that have the uh, over fenders um, that basically mimic the bodywork um, very well, mind you. Some people mold them, some people rivet them on. These are what you would call over fender kits, uh, and they are not exactly what I personally would consider a wide body kit, as we've seen in the early Fast and Furious videos with the E36 M3 that everyone seemed to forget about that was trying to attempt a maneuver that he shouldn't have been doing in the first place, much like the Liberty Walk or much like the Pandem kits that require a little bit more of meticulous adjustments of suspension modifications that don't just entail lowering your car and putting bigger wheels on it. Uh, wheels is one of those topics, one of those items that I wish somebody would have sat me down and explained to me. Knowing these things going into your build will save you a lot more money. You'll ensure you won't fall victim to the snowballing effect that these kinds of builds tend to come with. Now, another area that no one really seems to talk about is just kind of an understood aspect of owning a wide body car is suspension. 99% of the individuals that run the Rocket Bunny kit generally run air suspension. If you take notice to my video from about two years ago, you'll notice that we took out nearly four inches of quarter panel material, thereby requiring the need to drop the car even lower to accommodate the wide body fenders. Can you kind of see where I'm going with this? Um, by cutting four more inches out of the quarter panel, you're forcing your factory suspension to drop lower to meet the new uh, pandem over fenders and now you're faced with an excessive amount of camber on the reel to which you can't really dial out without going super wide on your wheels and so that being said make sure you do your research if you do plan on running the rocket bunny kit plan on running at least a 11 and a half to 12 and a half inch rim or bigger in the rear. Ensuring you have the proper track width in the rear of your car will ensure your suspension travel and your suspension geometry stays in a fairly normal range so you don't end up with a huge amount of negative camber and toe adjustment that's so far out of spec, you might as well throw your tires in the trash right now. So for my closing thoughts, do I recommend you wide body uh, your E36? Uh, my answer to that is yes. Uh, if the car is not your daily driver, it's something that uh, you got to drive on the weekends or something that you're going to drift or you're going to put it on the track, I say go for it. It gives it a timeless look that will never get old. When I was originally building this car, the ideal in the back of my mind was that I was trying to create uh, my version of a homologation race car, the old DTM race series with the old 190Es and the E30 M3s. Those old cars, the ones you see on those old videos where they're literally leaving the ground, uh, racing after one another, um, cut, cutting the apexes and hitting Hitting the track super hard, I wanted to create a car um, that embodied those old race videos that we grew up watching. All in all guys, this is my long-winded way of saying that I'm perfectly happy with the car. I do have uh, huge plans for the car this year. Obviously things are quite different now that the world is in the state that it is in right now, but I do have uh, things planned for the car and I really want to go ahead and acknowledge all you guys that have been asking me for E36 content. I've been listening and you're going to get your wish. Uh, we're going to start that up really soon. So. Um, Hopefully this was helpful for somebody out there that's kind of on the ropes trying to decide if they're going to go one way or the other. Hopefully this video helped you. Uh, if I left anything out, let me know. Go down in the comment section, leave me a comment, let me know if there's anything that I could help you guys with. If you have any questions about uh, my current setup, I'm an open book. I'm pretty transparent. None of my uh, build secrets are secrets. Uh, you can ask me and I will do my very best to direct you and point you in the right direction. So anyway guys, I really want to thank you guys for watching the Beamer Dude channel. Uh, and as always, guys, uh, peace out and Godspeed.